Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark Burns, and we are live here on location here at Citadel City Christian Center. Are you in the house tonight, Citadel? Are you in the house? Listen. Listen, man and woman of God, I'm Pastor Mark Burns. I'm so excited that you're watching this broadcast because I'm telling you right now, you need to call somebody, tweet somebody, Facebook them, let them know an amazing man and a woman of God. The pastors of Citadel City Christian Center in North Cross, Georgia. <laughs> Pastor Ahmad Dawson, Lady Dawson, they're going to come back and you're going to hear an amazing word from them. Listen, listen. We're just so blessed to get to do this all over the country. And every week we get to bring you an amazing church, an amazing pastor. And I want to tell you right now, Pastor Dawson, one of the hidden gems of North Cross, Georgia, who's ready for his time to be brought from the back to the front. And your life is going to be drastically changed forever. And right now, right now, even now while you're watching this broadcast, there's a number on the screen. Pick up the phone. There are prayer counselors standing by. My prayer counselors are there, and they are ready to pray you through your situation, whatever it is, 864-49-VOICE. Call the number that you see and watch your life begin to change because you are one instruction away from your life changing forever. Don't you dare touch that now because when we come back, you're going to get to hear from the mighty, mighty man of God, Pastor Mark Dawson, here at the Citadel City Christian Center here in North Cross, Georgia. I'll be right back after this. Has your ministry been called to preach to the nations? Well, Lift Your Voice wants to provide you with an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to a global audience of over 23 million homes. We travel all over the country and feature churches just like yours. We've been called to help the local church share the gospel of Jesus Christ to a global audience. We want to come to you. Give us a call today to find out how Lift Your Voice can come and feature your church. Satan wants you to feel like no one cares about your situation. If you're battling pain, guilt, anger, or having financial problems, or health issues, or having relationship conflicts, call the number on the screen right now and let our prayer partners give you an encouraging word to remind you that through prayer and the wisdom of God, your situation through the blood of Jesus Christ will not overcome you, but you will overcome it. Welcome back. Welcome back, man and woman of God. Again, I'm Pastor Mark Burns, and we are here on location here in North Cross, Georgia, at Citadel City Christian Center. Are y'all in the room tonight? Let me hear somebody. Let the world know that the Holy Spirit is here. I'm your host, Pastor Mark Burns, and I'm just so delighted that you allowed me to be in your living room once again here on this great network because we get to expose hidden gems of the body of Christ. And I believe we found two of them right here in North Cross, Georgia. I want everybody here in this wonderful church and those of you that are watching me all over the world to give a big God bless you to the pastors of this wonderful church, Pastor Ahmad and Jewel Dawson. Bless you, man. <laughs> Praise God. Bless. Hallelujah. I tell you, man, you listen, Pastor, you wearing that bow tie. I just want to know you wearing that bow tie. It's yours, man. You can have it. Lord, amen. I don't, I don't think I can fit around it yet. I need y'all to pray for me. 
Bishop Greg Davis, you know I'm coming for you, man. I'm coming for you. But listen, I'm so excited to be here uh, in North Cross, Georgia. And I want to tell you, in the, just in the atmosphere, Lord, it is electric in this house. It is electric. And uh, just the anointing, singing, Pastor Joel, you are, are amazing. Awesome. He's awesome. And I want to tell you, America, you better look out for some. Uh, this is an amazing worship leader. I'm going to speak it on tel national television that there's the next Grammy Award winning, stellar nominated new gospel artist of the year yes. right here out of North Cross, Georgia. Yes, sir. Pastor, listen, I want to get started for the time that's allowed to us. How did you get involved in ministry? What made you? Because, again, People have different reasons. Why you? Well, um, we started ministry. Uh, my father actually is a bishop okay. and uh, started ministry in Peoria, Illinois. And I was a youth pastor after working with the youth for a while. Began to be a youth pastor for a while uh, under him, working the camera ministry and doing some of the things Amen. with my father, working in media and some of those other things, and then feeling the call of the Lord. Always knew that I was called to ministry. Mm -hmm. Just never knew that, you know, how God would began to navigate us through those areas. Right. And uh, so I began as a youth pastor, then I became his uh, assistant pastor, then I became an associate pastor, um, and then God began to allow us to begin to navigate down to this area. And uh, so I've been in ministry for 18 years, wow. in the pastorate for 10 years, Amen. and under Citadel City Christian Center, um, under that emblem, we've been three years old over here at North Amen. Coast, Georgia. Amen. Amen. So God is good. What's, Pastor, what's so special about this church? I mean, there are churches all over, yeah. uh, and especially in this area, North Cross, Atlanta. This just is very uh, populated with ministers. Why do people need to get here? Well, I want my wife to actually answer that. I know Pastor she, Jewel, talk to us. I know, she, I know I always talk and I preach and everything else, but I want her to answer something. I believe our ministry is unique and in that we are real. In this day and time, people need to know that. There is a man and woman of God or, or a leadership, and they are all over. But here in Norcross specifically, we believe that we need to let the people know that you can love God. You can be young. You can have fun. You can be excited. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be rich in your spirit and rich in your finances. There is a balance to life and that you can do it and be happy. Sure. Um, you talked about your CD in, in I Hate My Job and just talking about some of those things. And most people hate Christianity because of the reflection we give in wow. the earth and what wow. they see. And so Citadel is unique because we're a worshiping power pack. We believe in fivefold ministry we believe in the laying on Amen. of hands we Amen. believe that God is in control we Hallelujah. believe that he still heals and delivers and sets you free <laughs> and so and then we believe in having fun we, we believe in eating spiritually and naturally we believe in having a good time and, and worshiping the Lord so. Amen. so you is so it's just a relaxed atmosphere it is it is and one of the beautiful things about the ministry as she stated before is is that it's very powerful revelation um, we believe in life application biblical teaching <laughs> and making sure that the depth of the word is also is taught but that it's also caught Wow. And uh, and so the beautiful thing about our ministry is, is that we have found a way uh, because the worship is so strong. We have found a way to be hungry and full at the same time. Amen. And the only I way like that, that we can begin to be worshipers the way that we are is that it is our hunger is developed from our fullness. Um, our ability to be so full of what God has given us made us hungry for more. <laughs> and so we've got that phenomenal ability to be able to do that. Your ministry is called C4. Yeah, yeah. C4. 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 That's right. C4. That's right. That's is it, it. C oh, is it? Oh, we got. You got it. T you got it's not a gang sign. No, you got That's teacher tell me. How do I do it? Oh, it's just like that. It's like just this. a C and a four. Like That's this. it. Explosive, yeah. Pastor uh, Marcus. It's explosive. explosive. Uh, yeah. You got to make some noise with uh. Yeah. I love how you did that, actually. <laughs> we might have to steal that. Yeah, uh, okay, I got it. C4. Like, why C4? Well, one of the reasons, not it, it's not just because there are four C's in our name, mm -hmm. uh, but I like to tell people that it's C4 simply because um, um, any type of shaking can cause an explosion. Mm, wow. um, any type of shaking. Anytime we come into the house of God, yeah. if we begin to pray, if we begin to worship, if we begin to, it can be explosive in this ministry. Wow. And God has given us that phenomenal anointing to be able to be that. And we just believe in explosive preaching, explosive teaching, and explosive worship. What's, what's next? Moving forward, what's next? What's, what's wow. Um, God has done so many phenomenal things. One of the things is, is we're working on her CD. Amen. Sure. Amen. 
Praise God. <laughs> Pastor Jewel. And in the fall, then, uh, in the fall, we have two books that are coming out. Um, declarations of spiritual independence Amen. and uh, and so it deals with some of the declarations sometimes we'll come to services and I won't preach we'll just have a night of prophetic worship and we'll begin to declare the things that the Spirit of the Lord has given unto us and so many of those I've documented mm. and made sure that we can begin to release those and so declarations of spiritual independence deals with the idea of being able to release people into the freedom that is necessary to accommodate the will and the work of God my Lord Jesus. and so now we also in addition to that we have just um, accumulated and accommodated 25 churches in Africa. Hallelujah. Uh, God has done that. Praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. God is Somebody ought to really shout over that. Amen. Glory God to God. Is good. Talk about that. And so we're very excited about that. We actually are send, sending our overseer over uh, in August to go and check on those churches. And as we get ready to develop, we're very, very excited about the developments that are going to take place. We're planning right now for our crusade to take place in 2016. That's going to be absolutely second yeah. to none. And Hallelujah. It's gonna be and great. I pray that lift your voices back for that. Event. You better believe yes. it. You better believe <laughs> it. Pastor, listen, I want you to, under the Holy Spirit, I want you to look in that camera. Yeah. And I want you to tell somebody who feel like, their life is over. Yeah. I want you to minister to them other than to the Holy Spirit and tell them not to give up. Well, I declare right now in the name of Jesus, right now where you are and where you are sitting, yeah. even as Pastor Mark Burns has just stated, I declare even in this very present moment that you have not gone so far yeah. that it yeah. is not the place where God can begin to pull you back. Even yeah. at this very present moment, I speak and pull yes, you Lord. back prophetically yes, and declare yes. that Jesus Christ has not only the ability, but he's doing it now yes, in God. the name of Jesus. Jesus. Back from the precipice of difficulty and every situation that you're at, he is the answer answer for you today praise god hallelujah somebody pastor amon pastor jude dalton here in norcross georgia 4cc4 uh. <laughs> things are happening here listen man of to god don't you dare go nowhere because when you come back i know that prayer bless somebody's life we want you to call right now call quickly now while the holy spirit is moving to you because you're about to hear an amazing word Pastor Dawson is about to come back and preach a word that's going to change your life forever. We'll be right back after this. Has your ministry been called to preach to the nations? Well, Lift Your Voice wants to provide you with an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to a global audience of over 23 million homes. We travel all over the country and feature churches just like yours. We've been called to help the local church share the gospel of Jesus Christ to a global audience. We want to come to you. Give us a call today to find out how Lift Your Voice can come and feature your church. Satan wants you to feel like no one cares about your situation. If you're battling pain, guilt, anger, or having financial problems, or health issues, or having relationship conflicts, call the number on the screen right now and let our prayer partners give you an encouraging word to remind you that through prayer and the wisdom of God, your situation through the blood of Jesus Christ will not overcome you, but you will overcome it the best place to praise because when you open up your mouth and praise God you begin to release the name of God into the problem and that revelation of God in your mouth causes a revolution to your problem so the text helps us because uh, the psalmist declares and depicts a concept that is inclusive of, but not, if you will, limited to a season in Israel's history where God revealed himself amidst calamity. Yes, you have to recognize that the revelation of the text is greater than what you see on the surface. Uh -huh. Psalm 76 verse 1 declares, in Judah is God known. Let me try you one more time. In Judah, God is known. I think y'all 
missed it. In Judah, God is not. By now, y'all should be shouting already. In Judah, God is known pastor why do you keep repeating it because uh, there's a revelation in the text that you're missing uh, all we needed was the a clause because uh, if you've been around church for any length of time pastor hamner many of us understand that judah actually means praise uh, so when we begin to say it back pastor g what happens is uh, we begin to declare even the mind and the heart of god because we say uh, in praise god is known uh, oh god i think y'all missed it uh, in judah god is known which tells me then uh, that every time I praise God I reveal God in Judah that's all you need in Judah God is known which tells me that whenever I get ready if you will uh, whenever I get ready to praise God uh, I reveal God uh, every time I do it now here's the revelation uh, I think you missed it because here it is uh, what God showed me about this is that my praise knows something about God that my problem does not understand let me try you one more time. In Judah, God is known. That means my praise knows something about God. So what God then told me is, your praise knows something about me that your problem does not know. So what I have to do is put you in the middle of a problem so I can introduce myself. Ain't nobody talking to me. Oh, yeah. I feel like the rapper right now and say, let me clear my throat because ain't nobody talking you have to understand uh, that God is trying to get us to embrace. Uh, he says, there is something your praise knows about me uh, that your problem does not understand. Uh, you keep looking at your problem uh, as if God has forgotten about you. Uh, but your problem don't know nothing about God. Uh, ain't nobody talking to me. Uh, your problem, my brother, my sister, uh, it doesn't know anything about God. Uh, so what God has to do uh, is he's got to get you to release him into the problem. The way you release him into the problem is not through pity and it is not through complaining. It is through praise. It is because Psalm 76 verse 1 says, in Judah God, I wish I had a church, in Judah God is known. So here it is, people of God. This explains then why it is that God allows many of our problems, many of our situations to hit us, many of the circumstances that hit our lives. He allows them to come simply because he wants wants to make sure that he is introduced to it. Pastor, why am I going through the sickness? God is just trying to take care of that in your bloodline and he wants to introduce himself. Oh God, God has to allow all of those situations to begin to take place and so people of God, you've got to begin to embrace this idea that the thing that God wants to show you is I want to know your problem but I want to know your problem through your praise. Your problem is ignorant but you your praise is knowledgeable. So what I got to do is I got to get you to praise me in the midst of your problem. And all of a sudden, your problem is going to get intimate with your God. And it's going to eradicate your situation. I wish I had somebody. I'm only going to do it twice. Would you give somebody a high five and tell them I heard that and I've got that kind of praise. Would you clap those same hands and give God major praise right there? Ah, so it is. People of God in Judah, God is known. So what does that mean, Pat Pastor? Put it together and package it for us quickly. I got you right here. You have to understand that when you begin to understand the concept of praise, then it begins to release unto us this idea that my praise releases a revelation that actually causes a revolution. Because a real praise creates a divinely strategic and contagious optimism that causes environments and atmospheres to adjust to the agenda of God. I'll try you one more time. A real praise creates a divinely strategic and contagious optimism. Look at somebody and tell them I'm divinely optimistic. Ah, yes. I ain't just optimistic based on something that I watched on TV, but I am divinely optimistic. I am optimistic because I believe that all things 
things are working together for good to them that love God. Ain't nobody talking to me. I've come to declare I'm optimistic, but I'm divinely optimistic because I got a word on my situation. People of God, as I get ready to close in this short amount of time that I do have, the best way that I can give you a picture of this idea of what Judah represents, then we got to go ahead and look, if you will, at Judah. If in Judah God is known, then it gives us the ability to have to study out Judah and what Judah then begins to represent. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego begin to help us in Daniel chapter 1. Because when we begin to look at Daniel chapter 1, we get an opportunity to see something that's so significant, something that's so powerful, because in Daniel chapter 1, we see those who have been apprehended by King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar has taken over them. Babylon has been given right by God to begin to go in and siege. Ah, yes, Judah. But I need to tell you that there is not anything that is taking you that God did not authorize. Oh God. God authorized them to do that because God was trying to introduce himself to the problem that Israel was having. And so what we see is, is that Nebuchadnezzar begins to grab hold of them and he begins to say here, I want all of them, all of the skillful ones. And if I had time, I would give you the prophetic word that God gave me about the generation that God has us in. And the generation of how the enemy is trying to steal our generation. How he's trying to literally grab hold of the skillful. Grab hold of the talented. Grab hold of the gifted. But that's another telecast. People of God, you've got to understand that when we begin to study out this text, we begin to find something powerful. You know the story and I don't have to belabor the point, but Nebuchadnezzar built an image and he commanded everyone to bow and worship the image. But what you've got to understand is that the three Hebrew boys, they were from Judah. Uh -huh, yes. They were from Judah. And nobody from Judah was given in to the idea of go ahead and laying down at an image that was not Jehovah God. And so it is, people of God, when we begin to study out the text, you will then begin to find that it is so significant because he wanted them to worship this image that he built. And yes, God, we begin to see something that is so significant because Shadrach Meshach and Abednego, uh, they began to look at what he was saying, but they would not take his offers. Uh, we begin to understand something powerful because uh, he wanted them to bow, yes, uh, to an image that did not register with them. Uh, Pastor, what are you trying to say? Uh, I'm trying to get you to understand that these people uh, looked at the image that they suggested uh, and said, we will not bow. Here's the reason why. Uh, they already had an image consultant. Uh, I ain't got nobody talking to me. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, would you look at somebody and tell them, huh, I already got an image consultant. I, I've already consulted somebody about the image I represent. Uh, and you can't show me nothing I need to worship. Uh, I've already got a PR director. Uh, I've already got an image consultant. Uh, he dresses me. Uh, he clothes me. Uh, he puts makeup on. Uh, he makes sure that I look the way I need to look. Uh, I've already got an image consultant. Uh, so I will not bow uh, before anything you suggest. Uh, and so it is people of God. God. They understood, and I've got to go. They understood, yes, that the idea, yeah, that they began to uh, wanted them to begin to worship another image. It was real significant. But Judah stood. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, we are from Judah, and we will not bow. But here is why. They recognized that they were a remnant that represented the whole. And anything that Judah did would begin to affect the masses. I came to tell you that whatever Judah does, it affects the masses. I thought y'all get that revelation. Whatever Judah does, it affects everything else. Why do you think it is? In the Old Testament, when they got ready to go to battle, he said, send Judah first because in Judah, God is known. And whatever I don't know about my battle, since Judah is going first, there's going
going to be a revelation that's released. Uh, oh, y'all stop screaming. Uh, y'all stop shouting there. Uh, I got one more to give you. Uh, and here it is, people of God. Uh, you've got to understand that when you read the text a little bit further, uh, you begin to understand uh, that they begin to say unto King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, they said, Nebuchadnezzar, understand this. Uh, we are not careful to answer you. Uh, we know exactly what we're saying. Uh, you can throw us into your fiery furnace if you want to. Uh, but we are from Judah. Uh, and we know God uh, and God knows us uh, and something significant was this uh, he began to declare yes uh, he said I want you to know uh, not only are we not careful uh, but we understand something significant uh, it's principle number two uh, principle number two is what your problem does not know uh, about you as a praiser uh, is that your condition uh, does not change God's position uh, it doesn't matter uh, wherever I am uh, I want you to know he's still able. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. He's still able. That's the power of my praise is that whatever I'm going through, he is still able. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Hallelujah. I got to go. But I saw something significant. I'm not going to be able to give it all to him, Pastor Jewel. But can I tell you when they threw him in the furnace, the Bible says they threw in three. But a fourth showed up. I don't have nobody here. I said they threw in three. But a fourth showed up. Yes. Come on, y'all got to embrace this. I'll talk to the TV audience because y'all not getting it. Y'all got to understand. They threw in three, but a fourth showed up. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying something significant because Jesus did not go in to the situation the same way they did. They got thrown in, but Jesus showed up. So when Judah got thrown in to a fiery situation, Jesus didn't walk in with him, but Judah released him. And when Judah started praising, Jesus showed up. Would you grab your neighbor uh, and shake their hand uh, like you're going to shake it off uh, and look at them. They're going to stand. Uh, proxy for you. I got to go. Uh, my time is up. Uh, but would you grab that neighbor uh, and grab that hand uh, and shake it like you're going to shake it off uh, and tell them, uh, neighbor, uh, I'm standing proxy uh, for your situation. Uh, now look at them uh, and say, hello, Bills. Uh, I want to introduce you uh, to provision. Uh, tell them, hello, problem. Uh, I want to introduce you to God. Uh, tell them, hello, yeah. Uh, now what you got to do right now is give God a praise. Listen, you there in TV audience, I want you to understand that even as God is doing something significant in this room, God is moving by his spirit, by leaps and bounds, and God gave us a promise. I want to pray for you right there where you are and declare unto you that the heart of God, everything that God has said unto us, even on this night, is taking place right there in your home. In the name of Jesus, regardless of where you're sitting, your situation is being handled by the power of God. I declare that now in the name of Jesus, give your life to Christ. I declare now, walk back from your situations in Jesus' name. God is coming through for you, and we thank him for it now. In this house, we're giving him praise.